So this has kind of been the year of DC trying to really push their uh, extended cinematic universe. And with, eh, we'll just say less than stellar results. Um, Batman v Superman earlier this year, um, while it performed well financially, didn't fare so well critically. Um, and pretty much same story with Suicide Squad. So, you know, I'm not too impressed with this uh, DC Cinematic Extended Universe. Um, yeah, the, uh, the last go-round uh, with uh, the Nolan Batman movies, yeah, those are fantastic. Um, the previous go-round with uh, uh, Joel Schumacher, eh, not so much, but I think they owe a lot to uh, our boy Tim Burton for kind of setting the tone for where cinematic Batman was going to start from. Because, you know, they've deviated a lot from that uh, in the last 27 years. Oh my god, has it been that long? Uh, yeah, it's been 27 years since uh, the 89 Batman movie. Uh, and DC, as a, as, a, as a company, and their films have deviated a lot from that, but that movie really kind of set the tone for where the Batman concept especially uh, was going to go. And so, back when I was just a wee lad, I was uh, nine years old in the summer of 1989, I went to the movies and I saw Tim Burton's Batman. And I fell in love. I wanted to go see that movie a hundred times. I could have gone to see that movie every day for a year and not been satisfied. Everything about that movie, from the music, to the atmosphere, to the character design, to the Joker himself, to Batman... Uh, my, Michael Keaton was a tremendous Batman. Um, I just love him in that role. And uh, everything about that movie was freaking fantastic. And one of my favorite parts of it just got a reissue by round two... The 89 Batmobile. So, let's bust this thing open. God damn, that car is just freaking gorgeous. Uh, from I haven't taken a close look at this kit yet, but from what I understand, it is a, uh, a reissue with some retooling of the original 89 release uh, Batmobile, uh, released to coincide with the original movie. I owned the original version of this kit way back in the day, uh, did very basic assembly of it because I didn't know anything about model building. I didn't have the patience to do anything more than just slap it together and stick it on the shelf. But it was a very awesome and very intimidating kit when sitting on the shelf, even in its unpainted condition. Uh, front of the box, Batmobile, 1989 movie. one twenty fifth scale, glue together model kit, skill level 2. I'm not sure if this is a photo of the model or what, um, but god damn it, it looks just gorgeous. Uh, we got some photos of the actual prop car. These look like uh, promotional photos from way back in 1989. Uh, you got some cockpit detail, um, venting on the sides. God, that. In incredibly impractical, but incredibly sexy. And, uh,. Includes bonus backdrop display. That would be Ajax Chemical from the original movie. Uh, box bottom has some call outs, some details, pull out turbine engine, computer access panels, detailed cockpit, and pop up machine guns. And then some uh, bio info, historical information about the, uh, the car itself. Um, Hot damn, would you look at that silhouette. It doesn't even hardly need painting. It's just gorgeous, pure, semi-gloss, black, slick awesomeness. That long hood, the pop-up uh, br uh, twin browning machine gun ports, big fat wheel arches, the sloping rear end and the bat fins on the back. Uh, the front end just looks great. Big opening for the uh, turbine engine. The, uh, I believe, Honda Civic front headlight and turn signals. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were taken off of a Honda Civic. Just absolutely gorgeous. 
Uh, bottom of the car, a little less uh, interesting because it's the bottom of a car. Very simple detailing on the turbine engine. Got some simple rack, all molded. This is one piece. Uh, I'm guessing the transmission and drive shaft. That's an awfully small drive shaft for such a large engine. And I'm guessing these are air intakes to help feed the uh, the afterburners. Uh, I got some very simple brake detail. Um, there's a simple rod that uh, slides through the body to provide uh, axles for the car. Uh, so this would be the runner with all the new components on it for uh, one of the reissues. I'm not sure when it would have been reissued with these the first time. Uh, probably it might have been for um, Batman Returns, or it might have been for a subsequent reissue decades later. I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, you've got your pull-out turbine engine, which actually has some pretty nice detail on it. Uh, a little bit of dry brushing and uh, a couple washes would look really neat. Um, not really sure what... Uh, I mean, these are all like mechanical parts. There's... Yeah, I don't know. Um... And uh, pull up, slide up uh, uh, computer panels that pop up out of the uh, in front of the uh, windshield. Um, so right here, I don't know if you would have to cut those out or not, or if they would just fit flush over top. I'd say you probably have to cut them out because uh, there's an alternate grill that uh, fits over top. Um, but you know they're quite simple. But again, a little bit of uh, dry brushing, careful detailing would look pretty good, and there's detail on both sides. Canopy. Oh. Playing with this canopy as a kid, sliding this thing back and forth and locking it in place. Oh, just so many memories. Uh, the housing for the turbine engine, the grappling claw, or grappling hook rather, for uh, rapid turns, which. Pretty sure Mythbusters proved was impossible, but still, looked was a damn cool scene in the movie. Uh, and you've got your uh, inner rims, uh, so the axle, the metal axle would fit into there, slide into one side, and then sl uh, slide into the other half. And you'd have uh, hubcaps to fit over the outside. Cockpit tub, one piece. Pretty good size, got texture on the floor to simulate carpet. Very conventional for a model of this era. Uh, you got your dash panel, uh, twin bucket driver seats, and uh, the actual instrument panel here. Lots of uh, dials and gauges and buttons and switches and controls and very funky. Um, would be I'm I'm actually really eager to get some detailed paint on this and see how it looks. Um, the interestingly the uh, the molding defects on the uh, Actually, I'm not sure if they're even molding defects or if they're designed that way, but the seats have kind of some weird molding to them that looks almost like uh, kind of worn leather. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Uh, side fender inserts. Um, big chrome intakes would fit into there. Uh, the pop-up panels on the hood for the br uh, twin Browning machine guns. Uh, not sure. I think these uh, pop open panels on the side of the car for the grappling hook, maybe. And of course, the uh, inside of the scalloped uh, bat wings. A little bit of flash on the edge of this runner, but uh, all the parts are remarkably clean considering their age. That's some chrome. That is some really classic 90s era kind of gaudy chrome. Definitely going to be stripping this when I paint it. Um, yeah. Not liking it a lot. The uh, bat symbols on the hubs, though, look great. Um, exhaust. Guessing this is the burner insert for the exhaust. Tail lights, probably. Uh, intake vents on the side of the car. The uh, nose intake. Not sure. I'd probably just detail parts for the uh, side skirt uh, fenders. Pop-up machine guns, molded in chrome. That's a little strange. Can't tell if these are supposed to be M1919 30 cals or M2 uh, 50 cals. I would guess probably 50s, 
but eh, hard to say. Um, I'd have to take a closer look at the uh, film again. Um, uh, the uh, scissor lift pop-up uh, mechanisms for them. Um, probably a kind of radiator something or other, some antennas. Yeah, really huge sprue attachment points on these pieces. Those are going to be hard to pop off without breaking them. And uh, gas caps. Curiously, there's two of them. I don't think the actual car had two. I think it only had uh, one gas cap. So, they're just going for symmetry. Big fat vinyl tires. Not sure if that tread is accurate to uh, the prop car, but hey, at least they're not on a runner and, uh, you know, have the big bit of flash in the center and a big, huge mold lug on the side. Those were always a nightmare to deal with on kits of this era, but they're big and uh, they look great. Um, and considering how little of them will actually be seen under the giant fenders, uh, I'm pretty happy. Um, we got uh, one uh, wheel axle here. Uh, clear parts. Um, colorless clear. Got uh, your headlights, your uh, canopy glass, uh, some taillight lenses, and uh, some clear red taillight pieces as well. Um, some neat etching on the uh, headlight pieces, which, uh, yeah, nice touch. Instructions. I predict these are going to be kind of simple. Only six colors. Semi-gloss and flat black, bronze, silver, steel, and white. Uh, guide for what means what. Assembly starts with the cockpit. You got your uh, controls, no pedals, steering wheel. Um, assembly of the side panels, which yes, that chrome part was a side panel for there. Um, insertion of the uh, cockpit tub into the body of the car. Um, uh, metal axles, which, oh, there's only a, a single axle for the rear, and then uh, uh, some interesting, some plastic axle pieces for the front. That's really odd. I don't remember that from when I was a kid. Uh, this must have been a a uh, running change in one of the retools because um, I could have sworn it had a uh, an axle. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it couldn't have a, run, a running axle through it because the uh, engine piece, the engine would uh, interrupt the axle uh, running through it and you wouldn't be able to slide it out. And um, yeah, so there's uh, that frame piece fits in where uh, under the engine bay so you can slide it out and you can look inside and see uh, some actual mechanical detail. And then the engine is pretty simple, just two halves plus a little uh, roller and the uh, cover. And then you got some pieces you can add on for uh, diagnostics and whatever, and a uh, front strut support so you can display it separated from the car. Uh, finally, you got your last uh, detail parts assembly. Um, the uh, engine, or the uh, computer uh, pop up parts which it looks like they just fit over top of those vents. And then assembly of the uh, backdrop, which we will look at in a second. Axis Chemicals, ladies and gentlemen. Where the Joker was born. It's about uh, 16 inches across. Kind of got an angle to it. Eh, it's alright. It's got a big crease down the center, obviously, to fold it into the box, so that's kind of going to hinder the displayability. And it's basically just paper craft. You just put slot A into slot B, etc. And it's just kind of it's kind of a wraparound design. It's an interesting uh, little addition. Uh, you got your uh, registration card, mailing list card, etc. And a uh, product guide for 2015. Uh, cars, 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 and more cars. Yeah, no sci-fi stuff. Nothing else on here that I'm really interested in. A lot of, uh, a lot of classic cars and a lot of, uh, look like racing stuff. NASCAR, 60s era NASCAR stuff. So, that is that. So, the 89 Batman is not a perfect movie. It's not even my favorite Batman movie. 
Um, it's a very good Batman movie. I enjoy the hell out of it. I can still watch it to this day and still get a lot of enjoyment out of it, even though I've seen it more times than I have fingers and toes. In fact, I'd probably need both my girlfriend's hands as well to count how many times I've seen that stupid movie. I could probably almost quote it from, from the beginning, from memory. Um, it's a great movie. I really dig it. Um, and this isn't even my favorite Batmobile. I, that's still... I still gotta give that to the Tumblr from uh, Begins and Dark Knight, because just so different and awesome and in keeping with uh, that grounded Batman not having bat-themed stuff just for the sake of having bat-themed stuff. Like, that was an adapted military vehicle. I mean, that's, that's cool. Um, but this one fits so well with the Keaton Burton aesthetic. Um, and it fits in that world so well, and this is a really great representation of it. I mean, there have been other kits that have come along since then. Um, I think Round 2 themselves did a new tooling kit about ten years ago of the, uh, uh, of the Batmobile as it appeared in Batman Returns, which, while largely the same uh, externally, has one additional feature added to it, or actually a couple of additional features added to it, but one key feature that absolutely breaks the car, that makes it Im impossible, that makes it just completely unrealistic. A two-foot-wide hydraulic ram lifts the car up and then spins it around 180 degrees on the spot. Completely ridiculous. And I can't believe that ever actually made it into the movie, because that's right in the center line of the car that's in the cockpit. Batman would have to be sitting on a two-foot hydraulic ram. It's ridiculous. But the, the previous version uh, of, the, of the, the previous model of it that I was referring to actually represented that as just a big circle on the bottom of the car. Um, that honestly, I would prefer to forget exists. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Batman Returns. Um, but yeah, that particular scene was incredibly goofy. That whole opening action sequence just was really weird. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is a fantastic kit, even for its age. I don't know if Round 2 did any cleaning up of the toolings. Um, but it certainly looks like they, the, the toolings were well treated and well taken care of over the years, because there's, like, no flash to speak of. Like, there's a little bit on a couple of runners, and none on any parts. And this is a nearly 30-year-old model and toolings were handmade back then. Like, I mean, machine milled, but designed by hand, and not to nearly the level of fidelity of modern toolings. You would expect a lot of flash for a kit that old. You look at any kit from the 80s or the 70s, or even the early 90s, um, that gets reissued now. Like, you, you, you reshoot that mold, mold now, and you're going to see flash like crazy. So, yeah, they, they must have taken really good care of this uh, these toolings and done some real good cleaning up on them to get them to to shoot in this with this kind of fidelity. So I'm really impressed, and uh, this is definitely going to be a working um, uh, a project I'll be working on because it's it's still for all my praise of it. It's still it's nearly a 30 year old kit. It's very simple. Um, it probably has fewer parts than uh, I, I've seen than the number of times I've seen Batman. <laughs> Um, that's how simple it is. It's probably got, well, maybe a little bit more. But it's, it's such a simple model. Um, and, uh, it won't take long to, to really throw it together. Um, I just wish I had a 25th scale Batman to display with it. But, anyway, uh, tomorrow we're going to take a look at something a little bigger, a little newer, but also a little older. Um, have to wait and see. So, thanks everyone out there for watching. Happy modeling.